Last Saturday night, I was invited by an old-time friend of mine to eat his lobster salad and drink his beer and wine. We drank a toast onto each other until the hour of two. Me head was a kind of shaky and me legs was shaky too. Like you would. But anyhow, I staggered home and I think my prayers I said. But anyway, I was paralyzed when I got into bed. I dreamt I died and went to heaven and met St. Peter at the gate. And I found repentance for me. It was just a bit too late. Like you would. You go out, St. Peter said. You know you can't come in. You know you'll have to suffer for your awful gluttonous sin. Just then I turned away to hide me grief and shame. And I saw St. Peter's clerk close by. He wrote lost above me name. Like you would. The next that came was an old maid. She was bound to have her say, and she addressed St. Peter in a peculiar sort of way. Oh, goodly Father Peter, I come to you at last, and one request I ask of you, if you would let me pass. Thank you, Lord. Oh, blessed Father, please, oh, won't you let me in and give me a nice little place to myself, away from those naughty men. You go out, St. Peter said. No angels have gray hairs. You got no sons nor daughters, so you can't come in here. Thank you, Lord. The poor old maid, she turned away forever to repine. Like me and all the rest of us, she entered in the line. Now next there came was Paddy, yes, a son of all Aaron's Isle. And he addressed St. Peter with a loving, gracious smile. Thank you, Lord. Is this yourself, St. Peter? You're looking so nice and sweet. Open the door and let me in and show me to me seat. Oh, no, me boy. Your case, like the rest, must be tried. You have to show a pass for it before you get inside. Like you would. Hurry up, St. Peter. Oh, for supper, I'll be late. He then took off his old slouch hat and threw it inside the gate. Go get that hat, St. Peter said, you sacrilegious slouch. Pat ran in and closed the gate and locked St. Peter out. Thank you, Lord. It was through the keyhole, Paddy cried. I'm skipper now, you see. Now I'll give you the keys, St. Peter, if you'll set all Ireland free. Now when I awoke, my head was jammed between the bed and wall. My feet were tangled in the quilts. Twas those lobsters done it all. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Superman, certainly not God, just a very humble individual. But as a humble individual, I was quite sure that the best things, the benefits that would come to the people of this old rock would be far, far greater than any troubles, any failures, any difficulties. The blessings would outweigh everything else a thousand to one. If I believed it, and I did, what else could I have done but to support confederation? What was best for Newfoundland and for Newfoundlanders? What was best? Would it be to stay as we were under the rule of Great Britain through the commission of government that they appointed that was responsible and answerable to them and to no one else? Or would it be to find some way or other, if a way could be found, to link up in some way or other, and that was very indefinite and very vague, link up with the United States? Or to accept the cut and dried, definite, spelled out terms and conditions that Canada offered us if we became Canadian. In my view, in my opinion at that time, the link with Canada under the terms and conditions that were offered was the right thing and was the good thing and was the thing that would bring the greatest benefits and the greatest blessings to, to our Newfoundland people. I was convinced of that at that time. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please join me in welcoming Joseph R. Smallwood. Thank you, 